Hey there. Father Michael here. It's Friday. Yay. <laughs> That's all I can say. I don't know about you, but it's been a long week. A long week. Good week, but a long week. Paul writes in the very first part of his letter to the Philippians, chapter 1, verse 3. I thank my God every single time I mention you in my prayers. There is power in saying out loud the names of people that we are praying for. So I'm going to maybe explain a little bit about this from my perspective and then invite you to try it yourself and see if there isn't something really different about praying out loud. Out loud. As a young boy, you know, my family had a lot of craziness and all of that. But before all of that really started, they had this practice of gathering us all on an evening after supper and we would pray the rosary together as a family. Now, for those of you who are not Roman Catholic, you know, the rosary is not meant to be a public prayer. It is a meditation type prayer, best done in silence. However, for some reason, this has become a thing where you pray it out loud, and I hate it out loud. <laughs> it really didn't do much for me as a child. I hate it when I, when I am at a funeral home visitation and I'm asked to lead a rosary. Oh, I just get nothing out of it. I have a rosary under my pillow all the time or on my nightstand. I pray in the car all the time. So it's not that I'm anti-rosary. I just don't like doing it out loud. But there we are, this family of young children, you know, kneeling around a lighted candle, um, maybe uh, a little wooden statue of Our Lady of Fatima, this is the Cold War era we're talking about, right? So you already know my right-wing crazy parents were all about Cold War anti-communist stuff. So there we are praying. Hail Mary after Hail Mary, you know, basically working ourselves into a mindless stupor of, of repetition. But the best part came at the beginning, and that was... Praying for people by name. So, if grandma had shingles, or, you know, there were some other serious economic or health issues going on with members of the family, we would say their names out loud and we would pray for them. That was very touching and powerful to me. It, an emotional experience for me. There's some, I loved my grandparents. They were my heroes, you know. I didn't know at that time that they would be my, my saviors when everything went to shit. I loved them. Praying for them out loud with a specific, you know, intention attached to that, it's powerful stuff to say the name out loud. <clears throat> As a pastor... <clears throat> I've got two congregations. I have an old Catholic congregation where we do the usual Catholic thing and we read generic uh, petitions. And even though I try to tie them to, you know, the weekly news cycle, um, 
for the most part, there really aren't any names mentioned, maybe when there needs to be some names mentioned. But that's the Catholic way, generally speaking. But in the UCC service, the morning service, it's different. There's a prayer list, and I literally get to pray <clears throat> for every name on the list, as well as people who during the week ask me to pray for them. Everybody on that prayer list, and it's quite a long list, I gotta say, right? I say the names of the homebound members who are unable to join us for worship. I pray by name for the members that are struggling with loss and sadness, health issues. The older the congregation gets, the more health issues crop up. I pray for the ones who are present right there during that morning worship and also the ones who are absent. And in a special way, I always remember the names of other people whose lives intersect with our ministry, either through Smart Recovery or through my work in recovery during the week people who've asked for prayers, people who have connected with us through social media, many of whom I have not met in the real world, and those direct requests that I get all the time. Please pray for me. Please pray for my daughter. Sometimes I don't even know the names, but I do my best. I pray for the recovering <coughs> addicts and alcoholics who are struggling, every one of them, to find a reason to believe in themselves, to find faith that life can be something really good without drugs, without drinking. There is power in saying the names out loud. Sometimes when I'm at Shof Park or <clears throat> driving in the car, or if I go to St. Patrick's Park up in the northern part of the state, I can say those names out, you know, in the woods or on the shore, uh, the banks of a river or whatever. There's something about saying the name out loud that changes the whole thing. So when I was a young parent, I thought I was going to maybe recreate that uh, family rosary thing with my own kids, but you know, it was a different time. The Cold War was basically over. Um, I wasn't waiting for communists to knock on the door and poke chopsticks through my ears. Yes, apparently that was a thing. Delightful bedtime story, thanks to my parents. But that rosary thing just never took, never felt genuine. It felt forced. Kids hated it, <laughs> and Dad already hates it out loud, so I don't know why I was doing it. I guess we do what we, what we know, whether it works or not. Well, it didn't work. What I accidentally stumbled upon only recently, which only goes to show that you can always teach an old priest new tricks, is the idea of praying not only for other people by name, but also for myself by name. As weird as that sounds, praying for myself in the third person makes it very real. And I can't even explain why. Maybe it's because when, when I do that, I'm getting a glimpse of myself from a more objective standpoint, from maybe God's perspective? I don't know. I don't know. It sounds weird and crazy and definitely something that you need to do when you're alone so your family doesn't, you know, slap you with one of those annoying 72-hour detentions at the local behavioral health center. But why is it so powerful and so moving? It often it brings me to tears when I do it. I don't really have an explanation. 
it's totally different than my praying I or me. You know, thank you, God, for giving me this day. Thank you, God, for all the blessings I have received. It's not the same thing as putting myself in the third person. I'm thinking about that. And maybe it's because we tend to wear a lot of masks when we're out in public. Every child over the age of four has figured out that people are straight up assholes. And you better be careful. You better be careful who you reveal your, your true self to. You know, if you're a girl and you like to play with trucks in the sandbox with the boys, you better keep that shit under wraps. If you're a boy and you've snagged your sister's Barbie and you're playing dress up a Cinderella ball in your bedroom, you better keep that quiet. All kinds of things that we do that don't fit the norm that we wear a mask. We put a mask on. We pretend to be something that we're not for self-protection. The problem is the mask adheres to our face so well that we forget really who we are in this whole crazy pageant called life. When I pray in the I or me, first, pro, first person pronouns, it's too easy to keep the mask on, even with God. But when I slip out of the mask, or I suddenly turn the mirror on myself and pray for myself in the third person. It gets real. It gets emotional. So I invite you to try that. It's like that David Guetta, B.B. Rexa song, if you know it, called Say My Name, right? Some of the lyrics are perfect, perfect for what I'm talking about. Uh, you've been dressing up the truth. I've been dressing up for you. Oh my goodness, we can all say those lines. We, we're always dressing up the truth. We're always dressing up for other people, trying to make them see us a certain kind of way because we're not necessarily cool with, with who we are on the inside. And like I said, we get so used to putting on the mask, dressing up the truth, dressing up for the world that we straight up forget it's a mask. It's just a mask. It's not really who we are. And like the song asks, why are you acting like a stranger? So today, a simple idea, a simple piece of suggested homework Try praying for yourself in the third person. And I'll try to give you an example of how that looks when I close this little session out with a prayer. It's pretty powerful. Give it a shot. And if you try it, hit me back and let me know what you think. I think you'll find something good there. Let's pray. Loving God of the universe, you who have called us into being, you who have gifted us with the miracle of this life, We open our hearts and our minds and everything that we are to your amazing presence, to the power of this present moment. Be with all of us who are struggling to remove the masks we wear. Help us to get real to be true, to stop feeling the need to 
dress up for anyone. Help us to put aside the games and the masks. And in a special way, watch over Father Michael today. You alone know the sorrow he carries, the struggles, the frustrations, and the disappointments. But you have stood by him through many storms. Lift him up today. Let him be your face. And even when his laughter is hiding tears, help him to remember how much you love him. Always. Amen. See what I mean? I don't think you can do it without crying.